So I'm going to be showing you how to solve a second order differential equation using the method of undetermined coefficients. This example is number 103 from Liebel section 2.5 and I've already written the differential equation out for you. It's just y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals x squared with the initial conditions. So the first step to write our complementary solution is that we need our characteristic equation to find the roots. So that's just going to be m squared plus 2m plus 1. And because we're finding the roots, we want this to be a homogeneous equation. So we're just going to set that equal to 0. When we find the roots, we find that they are m plus 1 and m plus 1, or m plus 1 squared, meaning both our roots are going to be equal to a negative 1. So we can just write that as m1 equals m2 equals negative 1. And when our solutions, I'm sorry, when our roots repeat like that, how we're going to write the complementary solution is we have our constant c1 e to the negative x plus c2. We need to have that factor of x added. And I'm just going to highlight and label that. I just prefer to label everything that I have just so I can easily see it later on. So that's our complementary solution. And our next step is going to be to try to find the our particular solution, our yp. And because in this example our f of x is equal to x squared, that means that our predicted is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. And even though the only term of our f of x is x squared. The reason why we don't just leave it at ax squared is because we need to have all the descending factors of x. So instead of x squared, it's ax squared plus b squared, sorry, plus bx plus c times x to the zero. So we have all those factors of x. And now we're going to write first derivative of yp, which is going to be 2ax plus b is a constant so that doesn't have a derivative and yp double prime is just 2a and now what we're going to do is we're going to plug all of these derivations into the original equation that we have up here so we're going to have 2a plus 2 times y prime so 2ax plus b plus the original yp And we are going to set that to f of x, so e, sorry, x squared. We can simplify this just so it's a little easier. So 2a plus 4ax plus 2b plus ax squared plus bx plus c equals x squared. So now what we want to do is separate all of these terms by the coefficients. So first, we, uh, we're going to group everything that doesn't have an x. So we're going to have 2a plus 2b plus c. And I think that's everything that doesn't have any factor of x. And we're going to have x, uh, that's going to be 4a and b. That looks like everything. And then everything multiplied by x squared, that's just going to be a. All this is equal to x squared. And if you want, you can always just make sure you have everything, add up all these terms and add up all those terms and just to check. And now we're going to actually calculate our coefficients. So because there is nothing in the f of x, that has no factor of zero, you know that this part here, 2a plus 2b plus c, this is going to have to be equal to zero. And likewise, for this second term, 4a plus b has to be equal to zero because there's nothing in the f of x that has that that's multiplied by an x. Lastly, a times x squared, we have our one term in the f of x that is x squared 
and that has a coefficient of 1. So you know that a is actually going to be equal to 1. Now that we have that, we can actually start figuring out this a lot easier. So 4 times 1 plus b, you know that b is equal to negative 4. And we can plug everything in, solve for c, so 2 times 1 plus 2 times negative 4 plus c equals 0. That's 2 minus 8 plus c. And c is going to be 6. Now that we have all of our coefficients, we can write our final yp. So it's going to be 1 times x squared minus 4x plus 6. And again, just labeling that. That was not written well, sorry. <laughs> Particular. And we also know that the general solution, just y, is going to be equal to yc plus yp. So let's write that all down. Y equals, so yc was from the beginning. It's just c1 e to the x plus c2 x e to the negative x. And to that, we're just going to add our yp, which is x squared minus 4x plus 6. So this is going to be our general solution. However, we do have initial conditions so we can find the particular solution for this question. The y at x zero is equal to one, and y prime at zero is equal to two. That's what, we, that's what we're given from the question. So what we're actually gonna do first is find y prime. And that's gonna be negative c1 e to the negative x plus, here we have a product rule, so we're going to do c2 e to the x minus c2 x to negative x plus 2x minus 4. That's everything. So we're going to plug in 0 for x in y. c1 times e to the 0 is going to be c1. Second term is going to be 0 because of the x that gets multiplied, plus 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 6. So we're going to have 1 equals c1 plus 6. c1 is going to be negative 5. So we have that. Now we're going to find c2 with y prime. So y prime of 0 is equal to 2. That first term is going to be negative c1 plus c2 minus 0 plus 0 minus 4. So this is going to be, we have c1, so you can already plug that in. So 5 plus c2 minus 4. 2 is equal to 1 plus c2, c2 is equal to 1. Now we can plug our constant values into our general solution. So we'll have y is equal to negative 5 e to the negative x plus 1 times x e to the negative x plus x squared minus 4x plus 6. And we can actually factor this a little bit, uh, the yc specifically, y equals, we'll do this, e to the, we'll pull that out, and then we're left with x minus 5 plus x squared minus 4x plus 6. And this is going to be our final particular, or we can just label it our IVP solution. And that's all there is to it. I hope this helps.